it's about 10 o'clock. Good morning, everyone. About Good morning, George. Rhonda? Rhonda, are you there? I am. How oh. are y'all? Great. Olga, are you there? Okay. All right. With that, it's 10 a.m., January the 30th, 2020. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. I would like uh, to call the Welcome <clears throat> or Workforce Education Course Manual Advisory Committee to order. Uh, as we get started, I'm going to ask for the committee members to introduce themselves, and I will start uh, to my right. Good morning. I'm Leslie Keeling Olson with Temple College. Good morning. I'm Joe Arrington. I'm with McClendon Community College in Waco. Hi, Troy DeFreitas with Austin Community College. Dwayne Shaw with Kilgore College. Robin Garrett, Central Texas College. Joyce Williams, Dallas County Community College District. And I'm Dwayne Hiller from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. Good morning, Phil Nicotero, Houston Community College. Linda Head, Lone Star College. Good morning, Cindy Griffith, Alvin Community College. Uh, James Chagwin, Tarrant County College. Vernon Hawkins, Brookhaven College. Mindy Noble, Nobles, Coordinating Board. And before we get started, I'm gonna ask Dwayne to uh, go ahead and, and tell us the responsibilities as we are, we know that they are for the committee as, okay. as part of being uh, uh, broadcast. Oh, sorry, okay. and on the phone, Rhonda? Rhonda Dozier, Texarkana College. Okay, thanks, just a, a few housekeeping rules. Um, so we have a Wi-Fi network called Education Go Get It. There's no password required. Uh, restrooms are midway down the hall, there are signs. And then there's a kiosk with snacks and drinks at the front of the building, just behind the security desk. Um, just a reminder that we are representing the state of Texas and not necessarily your individual institutions. Uh, we hope that the work we do here benefits your institutions, but we're really looking for the best interests of the state of Texas. Um, what else? Oh, just a reminder that this is being broadcast and recorded, so hopefully we'll be on our best behavior. But um, web, um, the, the link to the broadcast, or the link to the recording will be posted on our website. Okay, so with that, committee members, we will, um, you were provided the minutes from, from the September meeting. Should be in your packet. You have a lot of, we have a lot of things to go through today. We're looking for the minutes. Are they in the back? No, they're not here. Okay. So I tell you what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the minutes after the break and then I'll ask for approval after, uh, after that. Uh, Dwayne, was there any public testimony? Anyone sign up for the public comment? No, we haven't had anybody sign up. Okay, okay. We're on agenda number four. Uh, Dr. Nobles, coordinating board update regarding Perkins 5 and other legislative changes. I can provide an update uh, on Perkins 5, two main matters. Uh, comprehensive local needs assessments. Uh, we have provided materials to colleges for the completion of comprehensive local needs assessments. Every institution will uh, complete one and submit it prior to uh, completing the uh, implementation year Perkins basic grant application. We believe we are going to set, well, we believe we have settled on a due date of June 5th for uh, CLNAs. You heard it here. We will pro be providing uh, email to the field and instructions for submitting. 
subsequently. Um, I'm happy to let you know that we will be uploading to the website of our partner, TACD, uh, on their Perkins page, our four model CLNAs worked diligently on for many months by uh, Lone Star College, North Central Texas College, Trinity Valley Community College, and Northeast Texas Community College, uh, covering each of the four community college peer groups. Uh, those model CLNAs, um, of which we are very proud, they're very good, and the how-to manuals uh, that came with them for colleges as a resource will be uh, uploaded onto the TACD website uh, tomorrow, Leslie, am I correct about that? Excellent, excellent. And we appreciate our Perkins um, communication partnership with TACD um, in getting out Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, and documents such as these, which are long and complex. It's a, it's a quick paced response to the field to be able to get these things out quickly through that means. Um, I will tell you also, most of you or all of you are aware that the draft Perkins 5 State Plan is posted for comment to uh, TEA's website on their CTE page. I provided you a little summary of uh, Weckham's presence in the uh, draft state plan. Uh, it is, uh, it, 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 Weckham is referenced in three ways as part of the uh, state plan for CTE um, consistent with uh, the workforce system strategic plan and um, tri-agency priorities for CTE in the state. Uh, the Perkins 5 plan under review uh, explains the Wecom Advisories Committee's uh, establishment and its functions. Uh, in response to stakeholder input, it um, articulates uh, the coordinating board's commitment to streamlining CTE program approval and to updating Wecom to support colleges, more rapid institutional response to employer needs, changing technology, and market shifts. And then additionally, uh, in response to stakeholder input and specifically uh, the Texas Workforce Strategic Plan, uh, the commitment, um, and you, you see it in your, your handout there, bolded below, uh, to do the following, and this is consistent with the strategic plan which TWIC is expected to approve uh, at its February 28th meeting. Uh, we will commit to expanding and supporting adoption of a common group of Wecom courses per discipline and to aligning Wecom to post-secondary programs of study and secondary post-secondary pathways for career and technical education as defined by the Act. So I, I urge all of you to review and your institutions provide comment on um, the draft plan posted to TEA's website. It is due to Department of Education in April, and comments will be open until March 17th. Okay, that is all for me. Okay. Questions? All right, Dwayne. Chairman, I just wanted to say thank you to Mindy. It was quite a task to um, receive the requirements for Perkins 5 and then get these four colleges to move expediently and efficiently and Mindy and her team did an awesome job. They were, um, I'm, I'm sure there was a little frustration and, and figure from your end and you never showed it ever. <laughs> and, and it was a really nice team of colleges and, and went really well for us, thank you. Well, Linda, I will thank you, but I want to pass that praise along to staff. Uh, not many people know this, but the model CLNAs were Dwayne Hiller's brainchild. Uh, I referenced these at a couple of national conferences and people started writing it down. So we may have created a wave across the United States that we don't know about. I want also to recognize staff members Sherry Rannis and Stephanie Perkins who created materials, coordinated review of these, uh, did a thorough job in uh, communicating with you all and supporting you all. Um, and so uh, it really does, takes a, takes a statewide village 
who enact Perkins. And um, I think it's very much in evidence here. And we appreciate you four colleges too. That was a lot to take on. Okay, thank you. And certainly uh, on behalf of the welcome committee and the colleagues that are sitting around the table, we are very excited about the, the college that participated and want to thank you much uh, simply because we can use this as models as our colleges are uh, truly, truly trying to work and put their hands around this big animal that um, we will need to have and put in place by June. And so um, on behalf of this committee, I, I personally thank each of the colleges and the staff and everyone who participated in this. But my hat also goes off to the welcome uh, leadership team that has uh, is going to be able to put this on the website so all of its members and the entire state could look at it. So thank you so much. All right, Dwayne, do you have um, other coordinating board updates, please? Okay, I have a couple of updates. Sorry, I have a couple of updates. Um, somewhere in your packet, you should have uh, four pages that begin with figure 16. TAC section 830.120A and then B and C. Uh, these are the um, Texas Department of Licensing and Certification um, <coughs> documents, uh, what they posted on their website for changes. They will look like this, based. everyone? So, it's, yeah, it's a table uh, like this private and public post-secondary cosmetology schools and public secondary programs for high school students. And it appears that how they basically structured it is they took out all of the individual types of instruction that are required and grouped them all under hair care, nail care, and skin care, where it's 800 hours for hair care and it includes all those topics 100 hours under nail care, including all those topics, and 100 hours under skin care, including all those topics. So there was some concern expressed from the field about how colleges were going to work with the Wacom, you know, get the cor Wacom courses uh, modified to adapt to the new curriculum proposed by TDLR. Uh, what it looks like, and from things I've heard from other people is that the courses as they exist now can be modified or can be used with just a little bit of you know local modifications at the college to incorporate all of these uh, training requirements. And um, I'd like to ask uh, Joe, did you have any, um, I know you've been kind of working back and forth. Around it, yes. Have any uh, that, that's a fair summary. It, it truly is. Uh, it, what you're seeing here was uh, presented to the advisory board for the cosmetology folks, voted approved. They were pushed out for public comment on January 3rd. That closes on February 3rd. And the next week, there'll be a meeting of the board again to look at those. So I guess I have to say, this is what we think's coming with that 90% asterisk attached to it, right. depending on what the comments look like and what kind of changes are. The, the concerns that everybody has expressed has been the timeline issues. Um, every college is working on catalogs. Every college is trying to get stuff done in terms of degree modification so they can get through whatever the local process is, get state approval, and have things ready for fall. And the clock is not our friend in this case. The courses comment, since they have blocked these things in broad ways, and since the folks who wrote the courses that we've been using gave a lot of wiggle room, we think, and again, I'm giving that asterisk with that probability level to it, we think that that means we can snap the courses together as they exist, basically reorder the Legos, without necessarily having to demand new Legos be attached. Now, please realize nothing's done until it's done, uh, but that's the direction that we're seeing right now. Right, and, and we've um, kind of communicated that if, if courses need to be modified and contact hours or credit hours need to be increased or reduced. Uh, we can certainly do that, you know, just rather quickly upon notification, you know, what needs to be done. But we're trying to work with the curriculum 
developers to make sure that the courses meet their needs. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. And anyone else? Um, I do, just for clarification between the Legos and other things. Uh, just for clarification of, for those in the field to unpack this just a little bit, we are talking about the changes that we anticipated based on uh, the TLR um, for cosmetology. And there were a lot of schools that were concerned that they would have to change their entire cosmetology program yes. and that this would also impact the courses in the welcome and their and the hours uh, contact hours lab hours clinical hours all of those things at this point there's a committee that has gotten together and looked at how they can generalize those and put them into and solidified content and so now based on this submission of proposed um, course hours there is a high probability okay. <laughs> that uh, there will not be a necessary change of individual courses in the welcome. At this point, I'm going to say yes, and I keep putting that little asterisk yeah, it, on that there. that it is a pro probability. Yeah. And, and part of it also is going to be once we start putting these out and folks start practicing them, we may get feedback saying, well, you know, on paper it looked like it worked, but we've got to tweak this or tweak that kind of thing. Okay. The beauty of it is that the courses as they exist in Wacom do have specificity, but they've also got a lot of flexibility, especially wide hour ranges. So that played in our favor this time. Well, great. And Can I ask a question? Yeah, I was just going to say the other champion uh, of this <laughs> is Cosmetology. So I've already Cosmetology. written our curriculum, and so we're having to go to a two-semester program versus a three-semester program. Okay. And, and that affirms what we're expecting at MCC also. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to clarify that. I wondered to know if the coordinating board was going to allow us to get like 750 hours in a semester. <laughs> Versus 500. Again, we'll have to you know look at the curriculum, but um, if you can, you know, if you're able to have that many hours in a, in a semester, um, again, we don't want to oh, yeah. overburden the students, but <laughs> right. I, I yeah, think, it's oh. impossible. So we're having to go to a two semester, um, 30 hour total, and I've already got the first semester and the second semester, it's written and it's ready to go once the approvals are finalized. So about but 15, we are going to every, you know, we're going to lose 500 contact hours for every student that um, we have had in the past, so that the college has counted on, um, and the reduction in um, employment, you know, the time that they would be working will be reduced by a semester. So uh, there's just a lot of lot of moving parts in this, even when when we get it finalized. Certainly. And if I could uh, tag to that, that's absolutely correct. That's what we see also is that clear reduction in contact hours, clear reconforming of how the courses are presenting, probably compacting those. Amen to the possibility, uh, probability uh, of a uh, uh, job impact on this. Uh, mm -hmm. We see two other things though also. If you'll look down the page, you'll notice that the same strikeouts occurred for the uh, secondary school program. Previously, there basically existed two models. Uh, uh, post-secondary college model, let's call it, and a high school model. They, they are now the same model, folks. So right. while we don't have a lot to do with the high school in our area directly, we know that there are high school folks out there who are doing some scrambling to look at how they're retooling too. So it's a side impact there. Uh, the other piece is if you flip farther in that same document, you'll see certifications for esthetician and manicure since the hour mix has now shifted heavily toward hair in the basic cosmetology, we're thinking those two following certificates may actually start to gain a little more weight. Because if somebody truly wants to become good at these skill sets, they're not going to find all of those skills existing in the basic cosmetology the way they do now. So that's just a working theory on our part, but there may be some displacement of students uh, into these other programs. Well, and looking at this, it surely looks like the industry is definitely keeping up with the um, need and demand uh, of these new, I wouldn't say new careers, but emerging careers that have already been there. 
and it's an opportunity for colleges that have already are uh, in cosmetology to expand and differentiate these new career opportunities. So, Joe, can I also ask um, about Title IV funding? How, how is that going to affect? So you go from a 30 hour, a 42 basically, or 40 or 42 hour program to a 30 hour program. Um, our financial aid person is a little concerned about that because of the the uh, ratio of hours, you know, to credits. Mm -hmm. So, and then to go to an associate's degree, now you have to add 30 academic hours. How are y'all addressing that? Okay, um, let me first confess what I don't know. What I know in our financial aid world is where they are located. So I've okay. got to be careful how far <laughs> down that road I go. I, I'm not speaking any level of authority. But we've had the similar conversation and had the similar questions come back. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we're sort of in the, is this where it's going to really land phase, depending on that February 3rd comment end in the, the meeting on the 10th. But there are concerns for those exact same kind of things there. Uh, the degree, uh, speaking to that in our world, we had attempted on multiple occasions to put together some kind of an associate degree. And frankly, because we were so cosmetology heavy, we were having trouble getting some other pieces in. Okay, so this is the, the sunshine on the other side of the cloud moment for me, is if this package is down smaller, down into that 30 versus 42 hour range, now all of a sudden we see a little more flexibility on the possible associate degree combinations and permutations. So I don't okay. know, we will see. So much of that is, uh, you know, there are other people that need to come to the party and uh, they're just not fully engaged yet on that part of it. Yeah, and that those well, there are, is some financial aid concern because yes. you know there's a lot of things, notifications, and adding it to your e-car and approvals and yes. all those things. So we we are running a tight timeline because we're yeah. fixed, in April we start registering for fall. Agreed, and and yeah, again, time time is not our friend on this one. Right, and there are some guidelines that you are going to have to look at where it's fifty percent technical and fifty percent transfer that you're going to have to look at as far as the GIPWE and what that clearly states about right. whether it's not a technical program. But um, as we move on um, to the fact that these may not impact the WECOM courses individually, and if it is, it's such a small amount of change that we can do internally. So that's a great thing. Other updates, Dwayne? Uh, one more. Um, there's, uh, you should have a, a nice red and yellow uh, spreadsheet somewhere in your packet. It's called uh, Community and Technical Colleges. Uh, it's titled Cost Study, and it's a report of funding operating expenses. What I wanted to point out here, and what we've talked about uh, before, um, in the SIP 2020, uh, sorry, should look like this. Uh, SIP 2020, uh, veterinary technology is moving from SIP 51 to SIP 01. And I just want to show what the effect of that on the funding code normally would be. And that would be from funding code 16 under 510808, they were getting $3.26 $3 per contact hour. And under SIP fund code 1, which is agriculture, they were getting $2.48. And you know that kind of raised some concerns, so I talked to our financial people and the proposal is that we can create an, excep an exception in the agriculture funding code where that specific SIP code for vet tech can have this, the same funding as it had before under health occupations. Because we don't want to, we've done the cost study based on previous um, analysis and we don't want to all of a sudden say, well, we, from the cost study, you're getting 326, but now with the new SIP code, you're only getting 248. And so this is just to let you know that we are working on making an exception in for vet tech to keep it the same funding rate as it had been under SIP 51. And the second page, actually, when I was looking closer, I noticed vet tech is labeled as a critical field, and so it has a 10% wow. increase. So the change is actually from $3.59 as a critical field to $2.48. And so just to let you know, it will still remain a critical field and it still will remain 
at the SIP 51 funding code. Which again, is 359. 359, which again, we we're still in the process of getting that um, approved and verified, but um, everyone says we don't want to do any harm based on this change in the SIP code when the funding was already determined for that. So that was my other update on the SIP 2020. Well, uh, I love update. it when you end on a good point, and that is an excellent point for those colleges that have veterinary tech programs. Um, well, just an aside. Thanks um, for the consideration. So I, I did send in a comment uh, to the SIP wondering why they were changing it, and their response was kind of what I expected, is that they want SIP 51 health occupations to mainly focus on human health occupations, and they decided that agriculture, farm, and ranch was the best place to put veterinary technology. So at, at the national le level, they don't see this as a funding issue. They just see it as a categor categorizing issue. And so it never you know, crossed their radar that this was going to have that effect. But really, it's just a categor categorizing it more into farm and ranch. Philip, you have any comments? Okay. Um, Thank you, Dwayne. I'm excited about that, and hopefully that will be approved. Um, that is wonderful. Um, thank you, okay. Coordinating Board, and for being our champion. Um, I w yeah, no, now you do. Okay, I, I, I saw your face, yeah. No, with the cost associated with running a program like that, it's been unfair for them, so I think this is a great move. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Um, and I'm sure that many of you uh, have, uh, all of you around this table, but there may be some that are listening to us that may not be aware that uh, 2020 SIP changes are, uh, have been listed and are out in public. I know that everyone around this table got a list, and we were foretold of that by uh, Dr. Reynas actually before they actually came out that they were going to be coming out and those changes were going to happen. And, and so we got to listen. So I hope that all of you have had the opportunities to check your programs, look at what SIPs are changing, what SIPs are changing for 2020. One of the things I did notice on SIP changes for 2020 was that they are getting more specific. They are adding new SIP codes. Cloud computing was one of those new SIPs that they added specifically for cloud within the computer area. There are also some others that are very specific as well for 2020. It gives you an opportunity to look and align your programs uh, to those specific SIPs and occupations as well, uh, simply because of the fact that your students may be getting jobs in those SIP codes rather than the broad, broader SIP codes. So as um, these changes become effective, then I am sure that the coordinating board staff will, will let us know when they are going to change to SIP 2020. And, and um, that's usually kind of done on an automation, on an automation. Um, Automatic, yeah. Yeah, automatically in the system, and then uh, then it's put into those, then it lines with the courses that are in the Welcome. Uh, so what we have now, we have the minutes. So I'm going back up to agenda item two. And I want to thank Valerie for, Valerie Carrera for uh, rushing these down once, once, she, once we noticed they, were, they weren't in the packet yet. Okay. So thanks, Valerie. So taking the opportunity to um, uh, taking the opportunity to look at the minutes and on agenda item two uh, for consideration of approval of the September 27, 2019 minutes, uh, which is part of our quarterly meeting. So I don't want people to think we just September 27 seems so long ago, right? Um, so I'm asking for approval of the minutes. And main things I'd like you to look at are, you know, if you were, you know, the attendance, if you were here and you're marked absent, or if you were not here and you're marked present. And uh, also, So on the last page, page four, we have the uh, 
members assigned to subcommittees just below the future agenda items. Um, just want to make sure those are people who are assigned. If you're assigned to a subcommittee and you're not listed, please let me know. And if you're on that list and you're not able to serve on that subcommittee, also let me know. So we have non-credit, special topic local needs, and professional development course review. We have our own Vernon Hopkin, Hopkins and the taste leadership working on those. For course revision and archival, we have Cynthia Griffith, Cindy Kasparis, and Jennifer Myers. For credit, special topics, local need course review, we have Olga Valerio, James Shegwedden, and Mary Adams, and Leslie Keeling Olson. And for welcome comments, we have Rob Blair and Robin Garrett on those subcommittees. And like I say, if you interested in joining one of those subcommittees and you know, joining the fun, being invited to the parties, then you know, let me know. Yeah. But um, I just want to verify from the minutes that those are you know, correct assignments. Okay, so with that, can I get a motion to approve the minutes, please? Anybody? I move to approve. Thank you, Troy. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes be approved as uh, read and submitted. So with that, I'm gonna call for a vote. All of those who are in favor, will sign of aye. 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 Okay, minutes are approved. So I'm Dwayne, sorry, you have sure. one more. Okay. One more um, on the, that I almost forgot. Don't know why, because I've only been working on it for the past 18 months. But um, also wanted to announce under CB update that the cloud, cur cloud computing curricula have been approved by the coordinating board last Thursday in this very room. And so those will be posted on the web shortly. Um, so I'd like to you know, thank the, the two workshops that were held and the IT uh, POS advisory committee that reviewed and sent these forward to the coordinating board. But there was a lot of work put into this by this people on this committee and the workshops we held to develop those, first to develop the courses and then to develop the curricula to present to the IT POS advisory committee. So I'd like thank everyone who was involved in that and kind of a pat on the back, congratulations, and we're happy to have those approved. Well, thank you, Dwayne. Thank you and uh, the coordinating board team, uh, Mindy, Dwayne, Sherry, who all worked on uh, this uh, hand in hand uh, with employers, hand in hand with members on this committee. My special thanks to uh, James and Cynthia. Cynthia and Robin for your efforts in leading the workshops and with the uh, people, f with the large number of colleges from around the state, as well as the employers and being able to pull this together, it was your leadership of being able to walk them through and look at what it would take to be able to do a statewide program that would hit so many colleges. And we're up to 25 colleges that are interested and offering this program of study. And I think that's probably coming out of the gate with 25 colleges to saying that they're interested in offering this as presented is just, I, I, I can't even imagine it. And so it was your championship that did it. And so my hat's off to you and coordinating board staff as well. Joyce. I'd like to thank you as well. You were in the trenches with us. It wasn't just the three of us. You led it. You were you were very 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 um, supportive, and you did everything you could to push this through and make sure that the state was ready and able to serve those employers. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, Dwayne, is that okay. it? You that, didn't forget anything else? Was um, it? Does anyone else remember anything? I forgot. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think that was everything I had. Okay. Okay. To so we have uh, Vernon Hawkins here from that's representing Tace, and uh, we have Leslie that's representing Tacti. So we're going to ask for organizational updates at this point in time. Oh, and I'd, I'd like to give a shout out for Vernon. Thank you for being here, knowing that the Tace Conference Planning Committee is meeting 
right down the street at Austin Community College Highland Business Center, and he and raised, graced us with yeah. his presence <laughs> here. So. Yeah, it's interesting because I, you know, I was supposed to talk about who the speakers were going to be for the upcoming conference today, but uh, we, we tabled that and are going to do a conference call next week. But uh, my my update is basically, um, as I said the last time we met, the TACE uh, 40th anniversary conference is this year. It'll be April the 15th down the street at the at the uh, Omni South Park, and uh, this year, 40 years of excellence. The big probably what we're trying to do, and I'm working on right now is, is uh, attempting to get all of our past presidents to come back to the opening session and the president's reception that night. Um, so we're, we're, you know, 40 years to try to find them uh, and who's, who still may be available uh, is, is a task, but we're hoping to in the next uh, 30 days to find out. And, and if so, that would be, uh, that'll be interesting to see those from you know the 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 19 uh, seven, basically 80s who were presidents of the organization and, and uh, those two to the president now who all be in the same room. Um, so we're hoping that occurs. Uh, just want to let you know, let your continuing education leadership and staff know that it's April the 15th. We, uh, it, it is, the word is getting out because I think this year is one of the this is one of the the years where we're having a, a banner registration. I mean we have a. It's early for us. We tend to register late in CE for some reason, but uh, we're, we're, they, you know, the, it's, it's a robust regist registration at this point. So tell your staff that they need to get in early and often. We, we also have a, a number of really excellent um, um, sessions that are going to break out sessions. And it's interesting because the next thing I'll talk about in a minute is the special topic of local needs. And as we were reviewing those, we found out that we needed some additional training around the state. I think it's because there's been a lot of turnover in continuing education around the state. And we have a lot of folks, even on the board member, what took us a while to get the, the special topics uh, completed. Uh, you know, I was hoping to get it done in November. I, we had to run a series of training because when I look back, I was the only one who had had, who was on the board the last time we done, had done that. Uh, and so we're, I'm glad that I see the new list for the next one. We're going to try to do this every time that, uh, that, that uh, we meet every quarter so that we don't have that, that kind of lag in between. But that's something we found out as we went through this. But remember the Taste Conference. Let your folks know that they, they just go out to tasteonline.org, uh, which is the website, and they can register at that point. It's uh, $345, and uh, we think it's the the best conference uh, in, in the United States. So, uh, Basically, um, uh, as I said, I'll talk about the special topics and a uh, local need in a, in a, in a, in a, in a few. Uh, and, but I think the big thing right now is the conference, and I thank you, Dwayne. I know you, you're on the planning team as well, so you, you forego that meeting to come here. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, they're me meeting right now, and, and I, I just think that uh, – I want to give a shout out to all the continuing education uh, board members for taste, the leadership, because they, uh, I think they do an outstanding job <clears throat> representing those in the nine credit areas from, from all of the community college districts. So I just want to give them a shout out. It's not me, it's, it's them, because uh, they, they, they help and do all the work. So I just want to thank them. Uh, with that said, I think that's uh, all I have right now. The TACTI conference is coming up on April 1st through 3rd, and in our last meeting we had a discussion about whether TACTI would be able to assist with a Wickham training session or a Wickham 101. So when the conference planning committee met and the conference co-chairs are Dwayne Shaw and Kelly Townsend, as we evaluated it when it came to rooms and when it came to space, um, we did not have the availability at our current location to host uh, workshops. However, we've established and have on our uh, agenda a pre-conference. Um, as all of us were talking in the group, we found out that we all had numerous, uh, sometimes department chairs, sometimes even deans that had no experience really with a Wickham update or a Wickham session. So there is a Wickham past, present, and future on our website as our pre-conference, and we currently have 51 people that have um, said that they will be attending that. There's also a Perkins pre-conference with Brunstein and Mindy combined, and we have 79 people already registered for that. And then 
about 147 that are also going to be at our conference. And of course, we're like you, sometimes we register a little late, um, but we're starting to see um, growth in our registration. So we continue to want to help, and also at our last meeting, we were at the beginnings of our TACTI webpage. Um, if you have not gone to our TACTI webpage, it's a definitely new and redesigned webpage. Um, there's a lot of historical information because that was starting to um, disappear, so we wanted to make sure that we archived accordingly. Um, there's conference information, also past conference information, but if you go down to the middle of the page, we have a Perkins link. Um, we have a Wickham link, we have a resources link, and we have a subscribe link um, so that we can help the field. Perkins is uh, both archival information for the past, so we've started archiving. We've uh, archived all of Wendy's updates and the coordinating board staff that y'all sent out. They're there in case somebody loses them on email or a new person comes in and wants to read them and kind of see the evolution. Um, and then as the coordinating board is sending out CNLA, stakeholders, anything related to building the Perkins 5, we've also posted it on the website so that people can refer to it and find it there. There is a Wickham link on our webpage, um, really almost kind of just a holding place and a referral over to the coordinating board website, because at this point we didn't really kind of feel like it was our place to, to archive, that all really we didn't want to take anything away from the coordinating board and what their purpose was. and things being updated. So there's just reminder links to our CTE faculty and staff that they can go link everything and find what they need on the board meetings and of course the uh, workforce education course manual. However, if there is a need or a change in any of that in the future, um, we're open to that. We still have a webmaster that helps us um, and then does has done training. So a lot of us have the ability to go fix this ourselves or, or add whatever you need. Um, Overall, our TAC team membership's increasing. We're definitely seeing a change as far as welcoming in the new people and really bringing them up to speed about how involved and how fast and rapid CTE changes in the state of Texas. Questions or concerns? I don't think we have anyone from TACRO today. And, but I want to thank Tace and Tacti for those wonderful updates. And as always, your leadership is appreciated when it comes to the welcome and what we do. And um, we need that um, because when we start to look at workforce, the drivers of workforce are, of course, continuing education courses and uh, credit CTE courses. So thank you so much. All right, the next agenda item is consideration of recommendations from welcome course review workshops Dwayne okay and these these would be the comments no no I'm no. sorry thank you okay go ahead so and um, I guess the last Friday uh, we had a workshop to review Cisco courses and the new curriculum and in your packet you have some updated uh, it looks like this, the Cisco course review. And, and again, uh, there's a Robin and Dwayne Shaw that uh, helped uh, moderate that workshop. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dwayne and Robin to kind of walk us through um, and kind of unpack it for us that this was a trigger from Cisco to from the field. So if you, you guys would tag team on that. Th thank you, Joyce and Dwayne. Um, I'm just going to head it off and then Dwayne's going to get into some of the details. But we had, um, as Dwayne mentioned, we had the workshop last Friday and um, it was a great opportunity for the field to learn about Wacom. The majority of the people participating had never been to a Wacom workshop before. And um, we got a lot of work done, but we learned a lot about what's upcoming from Cisco. So um, some of the information in your packet, as Duane is going to explain, um, we really don't want to vote on. We need to hold because there's been some additional changes. So I'm going to turn this over and let Dwayne give us the, all the details and request the, the vote of approval for the appropriate courses. Okay, thank you, Robin. Um, whenever you look at the courses, <clears throat> uh, some of the, the very first ones, uh, as you're looking at the, uh, the 1301, 1401, uh, which is the first page, and then the second page being uh, the 
thir uh, the 1304, 1404. You see those were already archived. Uh, the only ones that were active were the CE courses. We've gotten some, <clears throat> we've gotten some information since, literally since the, uh, since Friday. <laughs> Uh, Dwayne received some information. We were going to request an archiving of those CE courses. Uh, according to our um, instructional specialist, that wasn't something that was being used. However, we've, we've learned since then that there are new exploration courses. So we're gonna hold off on voting the archival of those courses. Uh, there weren't any changes to those courses. They were gonna initially archive them, but there does appear to be uh, some more information. So we're not gonna vote on archiving those at this point. Uh, <clears throat> what Cisco, in kind of in a nutshell, has done uh, uh, it was there were originally four of the Cisco CCNA uh, certification courses, and they've narrowed those down to three. Uh, they retitled some and combined some of the information that came from those courses. And what this workshop mainly did, the majority of the changes in the workshop were to uh, take those courses and update them to the newest certification level for the CCNA. So the first course, which is the introduction to networking, there was very little change. The title did not change. The course number is not gonna change. There was very little change in the, um, in the description. And then they added an outcome to that to match what's the, what the current uh, CCNA certification looks like. <clears throat> the next course as you're looking through was the CCNA2. Uh, we're looking at archiving that course uh, and creating a new course to take its place. Uh, this would be an archival of the 1340 and 1440, and it would be replaced with the new course that was written by that group, which is 1344-1444 uh, number, which is on the next page. It, there was an, a title change, and then of course the, the descriptions and the outcomes changed where they've taken some of the second course and some of the third course and combine them together according to our instructional specialists. Uh, moving on to the next course is another one of the Cisco exploration courses which we're not going to uh, vote on today. Uh, that's one of the ones we're gonna leave uh, there, the Cisco three and four on exploration, so we don't need to look at those. Uh, 2312 is another course that we're looking at archiving. It was the CCNA three, uh, again, we have a new course to replace it, 2320, which uh, is a, was a partially what was originally three and also some of the things that came out of four um, to, to line these up again with the current uh, CCNA certifications. And the last course that's listed in the packet was the CCNA four, which is no longer gonna be needed and would be voting on uh, to have it archived. Now the courses that we're gonna archive would stay active until September of 21. So those courses would still be out there uh, for use if someone needed to, if someone already had them in a catalog and things of that nature. So those would still be out there. <clears throat> now also in this, uh, and, and not to be voted on today, but there are some updates coming in the CCNP. Uh, that information hasn't been released. However, uh, we, we made arrangements with that group to have a WebEx as soon as that information is released for us to get back together with that group to go over the CCNP courses. Um, uh, it was, it's our understanding that, uh, that Cisco's new certification starts at the end of February, but they haven't released that uh, information yet uh, for the, as to what the certification is gonna look like. So. Uh, we are going to uh, hopefully get that done in February uh, as soon as they release that information to set up a WebEx. Uh, and then we'll be looking at p the potential changes there. Not knowing to the extent what those changes are yet, we don't have the ability to be able to, to vote on those changes at this point. So, uh, Robin, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, and at that virtual workshop, we will also um, address the, the exploration concerns that have been raised and uh, get another feel from the, the team as to the direction of Cisco with the exploration courses. Uh, typically, equipment isn't the purview and the cost of programs of this committee, but um, in this case, it hits community colleges directly that equipment from CCMP is now being required for these courses, that, adding that security piece and the new equipment that they're requiring also. Did that come up in the 
meetings at all, and is there any discussion amongst community colleges about that? Not in that meeting, it didn't. And, and probably it didn't come up in that meeting. Um, again, Linda, like you said, it's, it's not their charge, probably, par and that's probably why. It's an institutional charge if they choose to offer the certification, the CCMP certification. Um, as part of that, they pay the fee, they take all of the other things, and, and of course, as you know, the number of years that you've been in workforce, it is to our advantage as well as to our financial disadvantage, but to ensure that we're training students up to date on what employers are gonna expect Correct. so that equipment cost is there. And so, again, you know, based on Lone Stars um, and some models that you all have had with JET and all of those for paying for equipment costs, it probably would be great to be able to have some of those things as, as part of advice and guidance. As, as, as you've done for many years. But probably, again, it probably didn't come up because it probably wasn't their charge, but it probably will come up during their conversation of the WebEx. So thank you for bringing that to the attention. James? Yeah, I just had a clarification for yeah. asking. Bottom line is the Cisco exploration course that as is currently in the Cisco curriculum, you're gonna come back and revisit that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then the so you're basically what you're doing is you're taking the four existing Cisco one four and condensing them down to three. Okay. Correct. That's what I thought. Yes, sir. And so that's what we're approving today yes. is to just that change. Okay. And and just for me for clarification, you're saying that this is not effective until fall of twenty twenty or is Cisco saying this is now? That's that's uh, the okay. end of February the new certification testing begins okay. for Cisco. Okay. Right, so we will have the new courses available uh, pretty much immediately upon approval today, pending approval today. Wow, but, um, did y'all so, hear that? The so, coordinating board <laughs> is going to have this ready for the industry and the certifications to begin. I just, I am excited. If anybody, I hope, I hope this is one that's being recorded. <laughs> Thank you, coordinating board staff. Thank you, committee. This is exactly what the field has been wanting for us to do stuff in real time. Um, Thank you. Can I ask one other question real quick um, about the Cisco exploration? I know that there was some, um, I wasn't there at the meeting, but I know my college was very concerned about it. So what was exactly the issue about the Cisco exploration course? Was there a potentially replacing that course with Cisco One? Or what was the actual concerns about holding off on that Cisco exploration course? Okay, and we'll, uh, Talk about this later when we look at the welcome comments, but that's oh, okay. actually somebody from your district oh, okay. submitted several comments okay. saying that uh, Cisco exploration courses are still, or actually have been revised by Cisco. And the, the workshop uh, instructional specialist indicated that that was no longer in existence, and they had voted to archive the non-credit version of it also. Okay. But since then, we received the comment from your institution, and that's why we had a meeting this morning and decided we would not present the archiving of those courses to it. the committee today. We would re revisit it with the during the virtual workshop. But you are presenting archiving of four courses. No. The third, the th uh, three hour and four hour versions uh, oh. and replacing yes. those with different courses. Yes. Okay, all right. But For the CCNA, not the exploration. Right. Yes. And I, and I will say, Joyce, on those lines where you're talking about how quickly this is responding, I think we did have to pick one of the instructional specialists up off the floor when we told him that we'd be voting on this next week and it that's would go right. in almost immediately. He, wow. the, they, no one could believe how quickly that's, that's, this, this that's, response was. That's simply amazing. Yeah, they, they, they were so excited. They had no idea that that was even possible. So they were very pleased. So, and, and so thank you, Dwayne. All right, well, if someone would summarize that in a um, motion, I would, gl I would gladly present it to this committee. Oh. You understand <laughs> it, Jason. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the recommendations. following uh, NA courses, going from four courses to three as 
further discussion and the uh, further discussion It has, uh, the motion has been presented. May I have a second, please? Second. Okay, it's been presented and seconded that uh, you, the Welcome Advisory Committee, approve the workshop recommendations uh, for Cisco. That includes um, writing of new courses and archiving of those courses that um, are required by the vendor to change and also tabling uh, recommendation uh, for further uh, exploration and research. So with that, I'm going to call for a vote and what I would like to do is call for a vote that's gonna be individual, individual instead of all together. And, and the reason that I'm doing that is because I, I think this is so monumental that we are being able to do this on real time. I want it documented that from each of you that you participated in it. So we'll start with you. Leslie. I agree. I vote aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Okay. Rhonda. And Rhonda. Rye. All right. Yeah. Madam Chair, I'd like to also give an update on the HRGY. Um, Let me just oh. say that oh, so now. Oh, I'm passed. sorry. I jumped in. <laughs> okay. Now that, that has been passed. So moving on to the next update, Dwayne. Well, that was her. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, the. Uh, Two colleges that are in, that teach the HRGY courses, and I have been working closely um, since our last um, meeting to schedule a virtual workshop to review those HRGY courses. Um, getting the faculty together has been a challenge, and we're still working to do that. But um, I just wanted to inform the committee that it's not been dismissed, that it will be held sometime, hopefully February or March, so that it will be brought before this committee at our next meeting. And maybe you can unpack that a little bit for everyone and for the audience out there to understand why we're doing it virtual. And That's right. It, it is only two colleges in the state that offer these courses. And rather than holding a workshop and bringing everybody together, we're, we're doing it virtually to make it easier on travel accommodations and, and so on for the, the faculty. Um, the HRGY, there aren't a lot of HRGY courses either, so it's, it'll be a very simple process um, to do, the, do it virtually. And that's one of our models to be able to um, do that with, two, with these two uh, institutions. Dwayne, are there any other uh, considerations or recommendations from uh, Welcome Course Review Workshop? No, that's all I have that on that. Okay, I'm going to ask that we take a just like a five-minute break. Uh, if you have not put your money in the envelope for lunch, I mean, probably have, so that we could pass it forward. Sure. We can do that during that time. Yep, pass it to the far end, far end of the table. Okay. So we're gonna take like five minutes, guys, just five minutes, and then we'll
to um, reconvene and move on to the next agenda item is a report from the uh, welcome comments subcommittee. Uh, Dwayne, I know that um, you and Robin are here and Rob sent some comments for part of the discussion. So I'm going to ask that you and uh, Robin kind of uh, report on this out. You, we have it in our packets. Committee okay. members, you have the welcome comments in your packet. And uh, Robin and Rob are part of that subcommittee. Dwayne has the report with him, so we'll just let Dwayne report out. Okay. So each of you should right. have the packets. Right, and so there are two handouts. One says a comments summary, which is kind of a landscape, kind of a table, and just shows like the first. Well, just kind of summary. And some of those that have been kind of addressed already uh, such as, uh, so on the first page around the middle, there's AUMT 2188 and 2288 internship. And for some reason they weren't showing up on the website and they were asking why those, if those courses were still available. Um, so on the, yeah, on the middle one. Oh, uh, he's on this spreadsheet right. here. So a uh, comments summary. Okay. Um, other ones are requests for courses to be un active, reactivated, courses that have been ar archived. Um, so anyway, these comments have been sent out to the subcommittee. Uh, Rob Blair was uh, in charge of that, but he couldn't be here today. But he's gonna be sending those out to the subcommittee and I guess convening either a meeting or some kind of email communication to kind of go over these comments. Um, there's also a, in your packet, a list of the actual comments as they came in. And what I wanted to bring to this committee's attention, you know, before Rob, uh, while, while Rob is still working on those. Sorry, let me, let me find it. Okay, I guess the one I'm looking at is on page seven of this handout. And the bottom one is talking about, that's the one that's talking about IT essentials. Okay, you've switched papers on us. I'm sorry, uh, this is the welcome comments uh, Word document that has uh, the actual comments spread out. And now we're on page seven. Uh, I'm sorry, that's a different course. I was going to say, this doesn't look like the Explore course that I saw. Okay, we'll have to. I, I guess we'll have to look at those. So we'll get together with Rob and Rob and Robin. Is it PDF and, Said that, 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 so okay, yeah, page eight. Yeah, there are several um, of these comments. Um, networking essentials. Oh, re requesting a new course be created for Cisco, for Cisco Academy. Actually, I mean, what I was, I was looking for, I was, I was thinking No, I have to double check. I thought there was a comment about Cisco Exploration course in here, but I don't see it actually. But we'll, we'll look into that. 
but this just let you know, you know, I guess for now we'll just de uh, defer this until Rob and Rob and Robin can. And, and a lot I of these will definitely these. be addressed from from the whole fixing of the the CCNA that we just approved as a as a committee. A lot of this will take place, and then as well as the CCNP, hopefully in February. And just kind of reading through some of these comments, um, it's obvious to me that uh, we need to, at all of our colleges, do some deep dive training, and it's an opportunity maybe um, to have an invitation or support faculty and or uh, program coordinators to attend the TACD workshop for Wecom. Uh, when you start to see, uh, especially specifically on the credit side of the House for CTE, to name courses that are specific with a specific title um, for a credit course that already exists in Wecom and they can't find it. Uh, or they're looking for it and um, not understanding that it could be in the descriptive or it could be in the learning outcomes that it achieves that goal. And so we need to do that. I, I do know that there is more flexibility on the non-credit side because of the short titles and how that's happening. Uh, but we probably you need to be very, very aware that this is a great opportunity to look at training opportunities and being able to read this and, and, and say, wow, this is um, a teachable moment that we could use to help our faculty and help new program coordinators understand that the welcome was written so that it could be more general so that you wouldn't have to submit local needs and special topics, and we wouldn't have 10,000 courses uh, because of that flexibility that locks us in place and helping them do that. Yes, James. This is a quick question. On page six, uh, where it talks about those criminal justice courses, and I'm just asking this as a committee, is that what this uh, gentleman, I guess, from South Texas College is asking for about those uh, things? Is that, about these courses, is that enough for a trigger? Uh, it, it looks like it could be a trigger if TCLO is changing and TCLO did change their uh, requirements uh, and there were some changes that were done for those colleges that had those uh, basic peace officer okay. academies and those changes were, were done and taken care of. Um, it, it, could, it would have been a trigger very much like a trigger for cosmetology because of the requirement. And, but there were courses that were in there already that could be used and for the uh, hours. And so again, it was an opportunity here for conversation with this uh, faculty member to understand the process. But again, Chairman, I agree with you 100%. If we can come up with the funding. I think your mic is on. Oh, so if we could come up with the funding, we really could use regional workshops. TACTI is great, but not everyone can send all their faculty and department chairs and, you know, everyone that needs to be there. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just recommending consideration of how you can get into the regions to get more people at the colleges informed and trained yeah. and and you're right um, because we've done that before and sometimes because of the fact that we think everybody's trained up there we go and then so it's not until cases like this or you have a high turnover and there's only one lender here right you can't go and train thousands of people that that are bring coming on for uh, Lone Star and and so we can take some of that, but we can't take it all. And so again, consideration of what do we go back to that worked and that will help us 
get less of these because it is an effective use of time. Uh, and that is training and what we do. We are in, our responsibility is about educating people and we need to start with ourselves first. So that's a great idea for the coordinating board to consider through leadership grant possibly. And I will just, um, I will make this statement. Uh, the Wecom workshops are a long time and continuing intrinsic part of Wecom maintenance. Uh, it keeps Wecom field based, it keeps Wecom current. Uh, we have new things to do with Wecom that can't be done without Wecom workshops. Uh, how to conduct those in the most effective way? How to uh, scale up so that we're not conducting maybe three a year, you know, something like that. How to fund it uh, and how to staff them are uh, topics to be considered. I think this is a conversation we're beginning that we will continue over several months and I think that we will see uh, full opera opera operationalization, don't do, attempt that word at home, um, of Wecom workshops uh, within this year. I'll be optimistic about that, uh, but we will certainly over time, uh, I will state our commitment to making this fully functional. And, and just for um, clarification of what the ask was from the committee member, and that is that we, the coordinating board also consider um, regional training uh, of Wecom so that you could go regionally and have not Wecom workshops but more training about what the Wecom is, how it works, how do you, why do you submit a, a special topics, special topics versus a local need, how does, how do courses get into the Wecom, how do you search the welcome? What are the triggers of searching the welcome? When do you actually submit a special topic to a local need? Especially for CTE credit programs. Uh, and so, and, and just knowing that purpose. And so doing that regional training, I think that was the ask from the member. Okay, and uh, I apologize. This, this, be, this came up while I had stepped out of the room and I got in on the very tail of that. Uh, that I, I certainly see as something that would be viable, uh, that there are various ways to look at doing that. Uh, I, you know, uh, we have categories under leadership that would fund such a thing. Uh, and that would be a discussion among colleges, but it would certainly be a benefit to the field. I can see that. Thank you. Question. Question. Would there be a concern about doing them as webinars? Um, considering costs of trying to get faculty or getting numbers of faculty to go into one location, even in a region which, which can be quite large, um, that might be one way to get larger numbers involved, just a thought. That's a great idea. Okay. And I will endorse that too. Cost effectiveness is um, key as we move forward. Uh, so yeah, I, I urge colleges to continue that discussion with the coordinating board um, about how to make this happen and to talk among yourselves and look for an efficient, effective way to broaden understanding of Wecom and the, and the maintenance process among uh, members of the field, faculty administration for CTE. Thank you. Wow, guys, I like it. I like it when a plan comes together. Okay, the report from Special Topics and Local Needs Subcommittee. I think you have that information. Dwayne, I understand that you will lead off with the discussion and then you will have um, committee member Hawkins join in on the discussion from the CE side of the house. Is that, that's my clear understanding? Okay. Right. And you have, um, again, three tables here. Um, and also at the, at the very end of the, I guess the very bottom of the packet somewhere, you should have, I've uh, recopied the, um, 
procedures for the non-credit special topic and local need review and on the back of that this SCH special topic and local need review subcommittee. So these are the kind of the process, the procedures we go through. You know, I will send a spreadsheet and it says once a year or more frequently as needed. Uh, we're probably gonna look at a quarterly report and, until we kind of get caught up. But um, so these are the spreadsheets that I've sent to the subcommittees and we also have one, the CELNST review, the final page, and this is uh, what Vernon Hawkins uh, sent me, I think yesterday. <laughs> so um, these are uh, the, that subcommittee's uh, responses or review of the CE special topic local need courses. Well, I guess I'm on now. Right. <laughs> Uh, the, the committee did get together over the last, uh, really over the last eight weeks and um, after we did our, the training I talked about earlier on, on how to go through uh, and, and look for welcome. And, and some of the, I guess you can go through and read, I'm not gonna read all those for you, but uh, the members of the committee, we uh, basically divided up the 266 courses and in, in about 25, 26 uh, a person and it went through and then we got together uh, after everyone had reviewed and went through them one by one and, and uh, saw to, to see if there was any, any, or any issues. We, as you go through this, you know, we, there was a hodgepodge of different things and a lot of stuff has been said earlier. We found out as we went through this process is that even on the CE side and probably specific on the CE side, maybe because of turnover, they're, they're just, um, they're just, people don't understand what special topic and local needs are for. Uh, they, they, they don't understand how to go through and search Wacom. We had a lot of requests for courses just because the name of the software, because the name of the product wasn't in the name, uh, wasn't in the, in the title. Uh, just a lot of, uh, a lot of things that, that were really kind of interesting. I think the one thing we did, oh, the, I guess one comment I would make too is that we went through as a group and, and decided that we're really wondering why it doesn't seem like all colleges are, are using special topics or local needs because it was really out of the 260 courses, I would say 85% were from the larger districts and very few were from Temple or, or any of the smaller colleges. And I, some, of the, uh, co some of the representatives on the committee said what they think is that they've had turnover at their colleges and one, in, in one case, I'll just say one case, she said she went back to her college and, and found out that because the person who was the only person who did did the special topics for maybe 20 years, have retired, that there were a stack of special topic courses that were sitting in a room that somebody said, well, we didn't know what to do with those. They would just file them, so they haven't been submitted. And she, and she was really surprised. And so we found out that we're gonna, have to, we're gonna work to get the word out to the colleges through TASE and through a membership. Uh, and like I said, in, in our upcoming conference, we're gonna have a, a session, actually I'm doing it on special topics and local needs, uh, we're, ta we're, we're talking about doing one or, or adding a piece about why to use comments because on the CE side, we don't feel that, that a lot of the CE uh, staff are using comments, but that's just kind of a side comment, side issue. Did you guys review CE and SCH questions we, or we, just CE? We reviewed the uh, local need and special topics for, for uh, CE only. Uh, we didn't do the SCH, and I believe there's a, a separate committee that does SCH, but I, be, I believe Olga is in, responsible for that. Uh, and, and that leads me to another point. There, uh, I'm gonna just go through a few of the, the main topics we found as we went through this because what it goes to the fact is, I think it, it's, the, it's the, the Wacom workshops we used to do. There hadn't been any CE representation on that because a lot of the issues with, if you go down through there, were hourly issues where the hours cut off were a 48 to, you know, 98 hour, 90 hour class and, and, a, and, a, and a college wanted to offer the course for 32 hours or for 30 hours and there was no other corresponding number. Uh, we felt actually uh, that, that there, it, as you go down through this, you'll see we commented that probably needs to be a review of this particular area because a lot of it was that somebody wanted to use a title with outcomes and it said that the range was 48 to 112 well, how are you gonna offer a 24-hour class and that be the same course, those kind of things. That, that's a content issue 
that we have to get people together and have that discussion. So that's those are the kind of things we went through. I'm sure there's a lot of those in here, and uh, but but just a couple more things. Uh, there was an issue about needing more of the corporate cl classes, the seven to forty hour range courses in some areas, because I know at least one institution they were doing a lot of corporate training, and they needed some forty hour classes, but a lot of the courses started off at, at 48 or something like that. So that, once again, a workshop to talk about that area to create some, some sort of classes. That was probably the big thing. Um, as, I, as I said, uh, extending of hours in some cases, some, some uh, issues were, were with, with courses that may have been 16 to 60, but they needed more hours to offer the course and Wacom didn't have it. It didn't allow it. So again, a Wacom review workshop for that area. I think that's the biggest thing that that we found in this. And um, you know, and, and like I said, the biggest issue was kind of getting the the rural colleges and the smaller colleges are really, I guess, wondering why, uh, or, or maybe there's no need there for for those particular programs. But it's just so many. We're from El Paso and Tarrant and Dallas and and Houston and San Antonio, and very few were were from from Paris. In fact, I don't think any were from Paris or East Texas or anything. So it was just some things like that that came up. I think, uh, as I said, the committee needs to be committed. I think they did a great job. Uh, I think now they're waiting for Dwayne for the next group of classes. Uh, uh, I think they want to. They they really understand the, the need now to stay on top of this. And so I think the iron is hot, and and whatever we can. Uh, do the next group of classes. I think that that the the group is ready and trained and and able to go through it. If there, I, as I said, if there are any questions or about that, you know, I guess people can throw stones at me since I'm the committee chair. But the issue is, uh, oh, one other thing I will say too, and I need to get with Dwayne on this. Uh, when we went the form that we got in order to do do these, the printout of of the special topic form, I don't think it includes all the information that. It, that somebody types in when they do the special topic. And I'll give you an example. As we went through these, there were questions that the committee had. It would have been really nice to call the content person that actually wanted that request. Uh, we, in some cases, we, I call, we called the college and we found out the program manager and asked them, well, why didn't you consider using this other class? And that kind of thing. I, I, I think that there's just some information that, that we didn't get that would really be nice if it's included in a special topic. If not, we need to look at what we're requiring folks to enter for that special topic because there's some stuff that could have been in it that might have made this a process a little bit easier for us who are who are uh, trying to see if it's really a valid concern. It's one thing if it's something that's welcome when we look at the title. It's another thing to, to want to know why. There was another issue also, I'm, I'm, and I'll end it right here. People were thinking, that, I think that people were thinking as we went through this, that let's say they had an area and it was a SIP 150101 or 150101, that the class had to be in that area. I don't think that they understood the welcome is kind of a content thing, that it may be a situation that a course is in another area or related area, and you could probably use that in your program. Because uh, we found in some cases, and we, we put in there, why didn't they use this course from another area? It would have been nice to go back and ask them because they may have a valid reason why. Now we couldn't use that course because we use it for something else. So I don't know, but but we we didn't always know who the content. We knew the college, but we didn't know who the the program manager. I guess I'd say not the person who submitted it, but the program manager and that kind of thing. So I think there's some things we can do uh, working with Dwayne to kind of make make the process a little bit easier, a little bit easier. But we'll have that conversation before we do the next round. Well, thank you, committee member. Uh, oh. President, if you don't mind, uh, just to just Vernon, some of those some of the things that you said, especially about the training, uh, you know, the, the the people who are submitting these, as well as the folks that are that are evaluating some of those things, like the the, the specific training for a corporate training, you know, those would be definitely legitimate, potentially local need or special topics courses. Stay that way. Yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't necessarily need to be courses written into the Weckham because they are very specific to a to a corporation or, or, or whatever. But but you're right, a lot of it goes back to the training on both ends. You, you know, those folks that are putting those in, maybe putting them in that may be absolutely correct. It needs to stay a local needs. But uh, you know, so but then again, if we see if we are seated across the state, in multiple places, then yeah, we need to write a course for it. Let, uh, Dwayne, let me also let me just say that uh, that that was another issue about the form. 
we didn't know if it was really uh, corporate or not. It was just we, we assumed because somebody said they wanted it from 40 to uh, for, they needed a 40-hour class, and there was a 96-hour wagon. We said, okay, they must have wanted that for corporate. What I'm saying is the form didn't tell us that, and that's what I'm saying. We need a little more information on the form because in that case, we had a member from the college on the committee, and he told us, yeah, that, I sent that in, or, or my, my dean sent it. It's for the corporate area. I said, okay, it, it looks like it. But that's what I'm saying. We don't know. And that made it harder for us to really look at it. It would be nice if we had to know, well, this is for a company. We said, okay, leave it locally. You know, but we, we didn't know that. So thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Um, and I think it's an opportunity and, and glad that it was a teachable moment for the committee. And I think more than anything else, the work, welcome review shop, uh, workshops, uh, course review workshops were that. They were teachable moments for people to be able to learn because some of the things that you've said, uh, Vernon, are things that I'm sure all of us around this table have said in our district for a long time, many, many years. And until you are sitting there looking at someone else's stuff, you don't realize that, uh, oh, that's what she meant or that's what he meant. And, and Dwayne, you are right. It's not just the person who's writing the course and submitting the local needs and special topics, but it's the, also the person who is responsible at that district for inputting that and submitting it. And so when you have a, a course that's been submitted called Healing My Personal History as a funded course, it is not just the person that's submitting that as a special topic, but it's someone at that college that's reviewing that course that says healing my personal history should be a workforce course and should be funded, and they submitted as a special topic, and it got funded. And so wh where where is the accountability of not only helping that person understand who submitted and wrote this course, but also the person who actually submitted it to the coordinating board for and funding. College algebra, example, yeah, so. college algebra on the CE side. So, you know, those things. So those are the kind of conversations and opportunities that, as, you know, committee member has said, head has said that it's an opportunity for regional because we don't have a lot of resources in this state that we need to be doing this, so we need to have more teachable moments like this. So this gives an opportunity for all of those in your, in, uh, you know, tastes on a regional thing to be able to look at these colleges and, and who's then who's submitting those. So because it's yeah. So okay. So with that, uh, you have the other. You have the that was CE and credit. Yeah. We're we're tabling. Right. Okay. Food's not here yet. Okay, so other subcommittee reports. Do we have any other subcommittees that are reporting out today? The only other one we have, I sent a uh, document by email. It's a rather long document, so I didn't want to print it out. Um, I believe Cynthia has a copy of it, yes. just if you want to see it. But uh, these are the a list of unused courses or courses that have not been used in the past five years. Um, just a reminder that um, in the last column, it was a yes or no. Um, based on some of these courses were written like within the past five years, so they're not quite five years old yet. And so those will not be archived, but all the other ones that are longer than five years and then just have not been used in the past five years. And I believe it's um, just over a thousand courses. Sorry. Yeah, wow. that will be archived uh, wow. this fall. And th those will be posted on our website also for people to review and That's good. if they have any comments where they see a course that they're planning to use or planning to start using that's on that list and they can let us know. But uh, and as we get close to uh, uh, lunchtime I'd like for us one one other thing that's that's not on the agenda and then usually we do not go off script on the agenda uh, at all uh, however this does tie into 
uh, conversation that we've had on the program of study for cloud. Um, and also, I know that since it's already been published and had gone before the coordinating board board, it can be allowable in this space as a conversation. And that is, if we could get a possible update on those other programs of study that were presented to the coordinating board's board, uh, could Mindy or you, Duane, if you all could tell us about those that were submitted and or approved to the coordinating board's board. Yeah, and those are in, yeah, in the queue to be posted on our website. Right, so, so if you could just then, tell us what they were. Oh, there's a... Yeah. 14 of them. So oh, trying to great. That's how many. great to know so, um, of programs of study. So if you could remember some of them. Off so of that. that's include uh, drafting, yeah, drafting, architectural drafting. Um, we had some in the constructions, including electrical, like electrical linemen, um, industrial electrical and residential electrical. We had HVAC programs and plumbing and pipe fitting, two separate programs. And then under health sciences, we also had the, um, so EMS, occupational therapy, physical therapy, assisting. Then we had um, <laughs> respiratory care, radio, radiologic technology. I don't remember the other ones, but. And that's so great. And, and the reason I brought that up is because some of those we were aware of because Dwayne provided us copies of what those programs of studies were and how they were going to impact courses in the Wickham. But we did not get all of those. So when you, I wanted to make sure that when you saw them posted, like occupational therapy and all of those, some of those that we did not get. You did get the HVAC, you did get the pipe fitting and plumbing, you did get the electrical, you did get the drafting. You got those in the construction area. You did get respiratory care. Uh, when we got um, the rad tech, it was still pending. There was still discussion, so we never got the final copy of those. So as things moved, we need to have a process. As things are moving forward, and I, I don't uh, blame the coordinating board staff because of the fact that things were put on hold and then all of a sudden they were then had to go forth because we, we do want to continue to move things forward. And so this committee did not have a meeting in that process. But we have established a process that this committee is knowledgeable of programs of study as they are moving through the process because of the impact on welcome and because of the triggers to change welcome courses and that content of. So I wanted to make sure that you all are aware when they are posted and you say, well, I don't remember seeing that. And you're right, some of those you did not see. A lot of them you did see. But I wanted to make you aware that they're, that it's moving along, programs of study is moving along and that, um, uh, and that clarification of those courses and be, then being able to offer those local courses that will be localized to the school to be able to select local courses. So it does not mean, and that's, that's the other part of having that brought to this committee so that there's an understanding and a discussion part of courses that will not be part of the programs of study. And if those courses are then being archived and not being used, then how does that impact the field? And that's the discussion that needed to happen here. We also have a good example of the cloud computing. Of course, we knew that it was going through and what was, that, what was a part of that. But when we were doing the Cisco update, there were two Cisco classes that were part of the cloud right. uh, degree plan that had been just authorized the day before we started making those changes. So it was very important for us to know what those programs of study looked like so that when we're making these other cho these other changes that we can inform the programs of study folks that, oh, by the way, this course did just change. Right. And so that's why it's, it's good for us to know. Mindy, you had something? Yes, let me add. Uh, we, of course, have had programs of study statewide and statewide fields of study on pause. Uh, we don't know yet what the new formulation of those statewide initiatives are, will be. Uh, I will let you know this. You know, the way we have, the way we have uh, implemented 
programs of study development is that we have a general committee around a career cluster, and then we have, as needed, formed subcommittees for you know, specific disciplinary curricula development. Uh, we began the process with the um, IT POS committee uh, for the first time of including a Wecom Advisory Committee member as an ex officio member of that cluster committee. Uh, Robin Garrett was kind enough to serve as that representative, uh, believing that there needs to be some connection in some advisory capacity uh, baked into the POS process. Uh, however POS is reformulated, we expect to continue that um, advisory capacity on the cluster committees. Um, so that should be, that should facilitate communication. Uh, I will also let you know that there has been quite a delay in posting approved POS curricula. Um, and I can't speak to all the history of that, but I can tell you that the coordinating board's adoption of a new, more secure platform um, new requirements for accessibility, which very rightly should be in place, and the sheer volume of work contingent uh, with the implementation of uh, Perkins 5 has uh, pretty well stretched staff bandwidth. Uh, we are committed to getting the curricula linked behind the list of approved POS, statewide POS, uh, as quickly as possible. I don't want to name a date because we might blow right through it, but it is a priority now that we have gotten much of Perkins 5 underway. And that's all, all I have for you. Other unfinished business from the Well, as we start to look at um, future items, um, we let's talk about future. We're trying to get an update from Joe, Rhonda, and <laughs> at the last minute, so we're just going to ask you up front, is there something you want to see on the agenda? I, I do know you're probably going to come up. Thank you. Sorry, committee member Heath. I don't know if it's appropriate or not to talk about Perkins or, or not and Perkins funding um, for non-credit programs, but in attending the AACC Workforce Development Institute conference last week, Department of Ed talked about that at the plenary and um, that it is allowable by the Department of Ed. And so we from Texas were talking about that and why it has not been considered for key um, programs of study in Texas. So. And that will probably be something that is offline and not privy of this committee, but it's probably something that needs to have a necessary conversation um, mm -hmm. since it ties into Perkins and part of a, maybe an update, as Mindy has given an update on Perkins 5 when she comes back as a part of her update. So we can put that as part of her update as a part of coordinating board <laughs> update and she can just give us that information when she comes back anyone else for agenda items for next time not an agenda item but when will we find out more information about that cisco and those two things who are on hold will that be uh, the, will that be announced how will that be announced um as soon when when the committee gets together virtually hopefully in february we're going to ask them the urgency of the implementation of that, and then you'll be informed as to whether or not we need to um, 
move quickly or uh, we can wait till our next meeting. Okay, anything else? Anyone else on future agenda items? Of course, uh, uh, some agenda items, of course, as you know, for this committee in doing the business that we do and our charge that are going to be standing items that are going to be agenda items that are standing. But I think if there are things that you want the coordinating board to address, being able to give them as much time to get certain reports and not calling Dwayne within a 15 day time period or a 10 day time period or a five day time period uh, would be best if you want to see something on the upcoming quarterly agenda. It gives the coordinating board time, their staff time to be able to, to get uh, those reports done and to research information. So if you can think of something that you're thinking about that you want to know about, that you think the field needs to know about, uh, that is within our charge, it is a great opportunity for us to now put that on the agenda so that coordinating board staff will have time to um, also uh, report out on that. Okay, so I'm hearing none, and also I just want to report, I mean, um, have the committees again, I mean, the organizations again, say what their conference dates are uh, and their theme. Uh, Tace, Vernon, your conference date again? April 15th through 17th in this year's theme. 40 years of excellence. And Again, Leslie. April 1st through April 3rd at the Omni South Park, a clearer vision for 2020. Right. All right. So now let's look at timelines and future meeting dates. If there are no other agenda items. Okay. Uh, Robin has already told me we have our next meeting scheduled and it's uh, February the 20th. No. No, 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 no. So this is her calendar. That's my calendar. The next April down. April thirtieth. No. Sorry, April thirtieth. I was I must have been thinking about the the Cisco. I'm like James. I'm I'm anxious now. Yeah, yeah. We we we've, we've been able to do it in real time. I just want us to keep on doing it in real time. April thirtieth is the next meeting, and then you have July thirtieth after that. So let's make sure we have those calendar dates. Okay. Uh, let, let me say that at one of these future meetings, we need to consider um, an FY21 quarterly meeting calendar too, so we can get those on the board schedule. That would be good. Board room schedule, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so, so Madam Chair, uh, talking about the, the, the TACTI conference and the Weckham pre-conference that you've so graciously agreed to, uh, to be a part of. That's probably the reason why we have already 51 people signed up because we have Joyce Williams as the uh, as the speaker signed up for that. Uh, it is a three it is a three hour uh, it is a three hour pre conference, and if anyone is uh, interested in helping Joyce uh, with that, I'm sure she would uh, appreciate some help from the committee on some presentations. I'm sure Dwayne's going to be happy to be there. I'm sure he'll be there just if nothing else to make sure we're, we're telling them the right thing about the Weckham. So, uh, but uh, any any assistance with that would be great. Uh, thank you, committee member Shaw. Uh, I did find out today, uh, this morning, matter of fact, that I am doing a pre-conference at TACTI. <laughs> And I, I have all the thanks to go to committee member Shaw. And I, I totally appreciate that. And uh, he has also volunteered to be part of the workshop. And again, I think it is necessary as we have now gone through this information and we have actually seen for ourselves that there are a lot of opportunities for people to learn from us and also for us to pass on institutional knowledge and experiences to others. And it is folks like uh, committee member Shaw and committee member Garrett who 
have volunteered to be a part of the welcome pre-conference. And I welcome any of you around this table this, to be able to, to uh, want to be a part of a three hour pre-conference workshop in which we will be uh, imparting on those um, that'll be in our in the audience more about welcome and ideas about how it actually can be presented because everyone does not learn the same. Examples that could be presented, things that maybe we've gone through today or things, experiences that you've had before. And so those teachable moments that we can do. So all of that feedback, even if you don't want to participate and present, but giving us ideas of how it can be presented where it's a teachable moment and it's of value to them and it's something they can walk away with. So I would love for your input, uh, for us to have your input on uh, how it should be presented, if it should be interactive. And you have Dwayne and Robin doing a tap dance and submitting <laughs> a, a CE course called Tap Dancing. And so, <laughs> uh, but of course, uh, and I'll just that, just trying to make sure that it is of value and that they actually walk away with something that they have learned on that day. So I, I, if you want to participate, I open the door for you. If you don't want to participate as far as doing that, but please give us input. Okay. And you know, this is a field driven workshop as a service to the field by uh, representatives of colleges who sit on this uh, advisory committee. However, I will uh, and have volunteered uh, staff member Dwayne Hiller to be on hand to answer any questions, um, to assist as needed, and, and, and he knows about it in advance. So, um, unlike some of you. So, uh, <laughs> you, you, can, you can count on Dwayne uh, to, to answer questions or contribute um, to your field-driven workshop, and you know, as you see fit. Okay. All right. Well, with that, if there are no other items and no other information that's coming from the coordinating board, uh, I will not prolong this meeting, and I call this meeting uh, to close at 11:54, January 30th, 2020. Uh, we are adjourned. Bye, everybody.